Like I said, we're going to talk to Joseph Overton. Is that that's right, right, Joseph Overton? Overton. I'm sorry. Okay, about the outrageous law competition. Yes. It's, uh, it was a write-up in the uh, Muskegon Chronicle about this, and it uh, just mentioned a few of the outrageous uh, things, like the Ann Arbor Ordinance outlaws uh, washing horses and wagons in yeah. the city streets. Grand Rapids had this unlawful hug someone while in a moving vehicle. Yes. Okay. <laughs> State law prohibits employees at a uh, funeral home from um, uttering uh, obscenities in front of the dead person, which That's is kind of unusual. That's right. Uh, I don't quite understand why the uh, dead person would care. <laughs> No, it has to be pretty strong language. I would imagine. For them to, to be, upset. be upset. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, uh, but um, there's a competition which awards. There's, is, is there like a couple of competitions? I see. I see well, what we have, we call our outrageous law competition, and right. we're offering uh, four hundred dollars total in prizes. That's one hundred dollars for each of four categories. Oh, okay. And we have uh, one category is for some of those laws that you mentioned. That's the the most humorous laws. Mm-hmm. And uh, but we have some other categories that are a little more serious. Uh, one category is for the most uh, outrageous waste of taxpayer dollars. We hear those stories about the federal government uh, paying $500 for a hammer or $800 for a toilet seat. Any, any laws in yeah, Michigan yeah. that just simply are outrageous waste of money. Uh, the third category is uh, economic liberties for laws that make it difficult to run a business or earn a living. And then the fourth category is uh, civil liberties for laws which infringe on freedom of speech and uh, freedom of association, those type of things. Okay. And you know, um, when you talk about the, some of the foolish money that the, some of the, gov- that the government spends, I remember when I was, when I, was uh, I don't know, 18, 19 years old, I worked at, over at the uh, Suffrage Air Force Base. Mm-hmm. And uh, they had uh, a meter there, uh, a millimeter, I mean a uh, voltmeter rather, that they were going to throw away. And all it was was a was a, a dial was bad, okay, just a, a like a two dollar part. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, I was going just going through electronic school and stuff, so I knew what it was, and I could have fixed it for them. But instead of doing that, they threw it out and bought a, a new one for like wow. four hundred dollars. Wow. And, and then after that, I never could understand, you know, some of the some of the ways they used to do things. So. Right. Well, we, I think everybody knows of laws like that uh, that they run across, and so often it's legislators are more focused on passing new laws than they are on going back and examining laws that are on the books that are harmful or just needlessly meddlesome. Yeah. And so uh, we are offering uh, this competition, and we hope that we can get Michigan citizens to submit their favorite uh, outrageous state law or city ordinance, and we're going to compile these, select a winner, and publicize the results uh, in uh, July. How do some of these laws still stay on the books? Don't people go through the books yearly, maybe, to find out some of these strange laws? Well, they really don't. Again, I think typically legislators and public officials react to current emergencies, and Mm -hmm. so they're always uh, dealing with with new uh, programs and policies. And the uh, you know the ordinances, for example, there's one in Michigan that. makes it illegal for you to have a sticker on your car for or a decal or a sticker on your car for an organization that you don't belong to. Okay. And, you know, some association wants to get this law on the books. They they lobby. <laughs> it, it gets on the books, and then nobody ever goes back and says this is really a ridiculous yeah, thing. So yeah. we're trying to do a little bit of a spring cleanup here and encourage uh, Michigan citizens again to, to let us know of the, the laws that uh, they think should be repealed. Now, have you ever met anybody that got arrested for spitting on the sidewalk? <laughs> no, I have not. Okay, I guess that's a law in the, the books in Grand Rapids, I guess. And uh, be careful not to chase squirrels in the city of Ann Arbor. Yeah, you, yeah, you're There's saying that. Yeah. against that for, for people. Why would anybody want to chase a squirrel? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I, I, my grandfather did that one time, and it chased him back, and he was, he was sorry for it, believe me. I just his arm hope and... that they don't have a lot of cats and dogs that are languishing in the uh, Ann Arbor jail. I don't know. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, rest the dogs and cats. Now, do you know some of the, so what do you have so far as far as, can you name a few of the outrageous ones, some of the funny ones? Well, we have, uh, the, the one with the decals was, was particularly interesting to me. Mm-hmm, yeah. It's also <laughs> illegal to use the likeness or name of a dead ex-president in a liquor advertisement in the state of Michigan. So oh, really? We, we can't have, you can't have a Richard Nixon beer or a Herbert Hoover wine cooler. Uh, so then you go to their brothers, like Billy, Billy Beer. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, Carter. Billy Beer apparently is, is is legal in Michigan. He's uh, not uh, until he's elected president. We're we're, we're safe with that. But uh, yeah, so you go with the brothers. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we have uh, some some more serious. Uh, there was a school district that uh, a school district employee that sent in a OSHA regulation, actually a my OSHA regulation, which exceeded federal requirements. Is go- is just going to cause a tremendous burden on their school district in terms of training employees for this uh, one um, health related related policy and it's going to be a very expensive process so not all the ones that are coming in are are of the humorous nature and and we want to look at some of the more serious uh, impediments to running a business or a school or whatever it might be right now um this now when when you do this for you know for more information they've got your number here to call now um to enter you would rather have them what send it Send the yeah, here? they can. They can either. One thing I could do is that so we have a a toll free number that they could call if they would actually like to get an entry form. Oh, okay. And our number is one eight hundred two two ideas. Oh, okay. Two two i d e a s. So they can call that number. We'd be happy to send them a uh, a flyer. Or if they would just like to write up a description of the law that they that they know about. Uh, if they have the ordinance number or the legal citation, that would help. Okay, so and then just just describe what the law is, and then how it, uh, why they think it's outrageous and, and should be looked at for repeal. Okay. And you know, obviously, there are some some regulations make more sense than others. Right. And we're looking for the ones that just really, I think everybody would probably pretty much agree are are, are a waste. Okay. So now, when when you when you look at these now, are you actually looking at these not just for the humor, but also just to see if you can get them off the books? Yeah. Well, our you know, our goal at the Mackinac Center for Public Policy is to help improve Michigan government uh, and and help uh, improve the quality of life for Michigan citizens. And you know, again, we have the four categories of civil liberties, economic liberties, waste of taxpayer money, and and then humorous laws. So. Mm-hmm. And we've got a category for humorous laws. If it's a humorous law, if it's a waste of just a waste of money, we have a category for that. And if it's uh, something that makes your life more difficult in terms of earning a living or just uh, exercising personal freedoms, we have categories for those. And each one will be judged according to to that criteria. Okay. So if they have if they have ideas, they call they got a toll, got a toll free number, or they have uh, laws that they want to get across to you that they think are outrageous. Sure. They could just send them in, too, if you'd like. I could give you our, our mailing address. Okay. I have it here, too. Okay. Uh, but anyway, the the toll-free number is 1-800-22-IDEAS. That's right. I-D-E-A-S. Okay. And the address is? I, I got it here somewhere. Here sure, it is. It's uh, Post Office Box 568. Oh, okay. I got a different address. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the best one. It's P.O. Box 568, and it's Midland, Michigan. Right. And the zip code is 48640. Okay, because the one I have here is the Outrageous Law Competition and Mackinac Center for Public Policy. Now, is that one a... That's right. You can send that one, too? Sure. Which is uh, 119 Ashman Street? That's our street address, right. Oh, okay. Okay, so the post office box or the street address. Mm-hmm. Or the number. And so is there anything else you can t- tell us of as far as maybe another outrageous one you might have thought of? Oh, let's see. We, uh, I'm trying to, trying to think there was... Uh, well, some of the ones from the past are, are interesting, Oscar. Uh, there used to be uh, illegal in in uh, some cities for a woman to raise her dress more than six inches as she crossed a mud puddle. Okay. Uh, you know, things like that that are somewhat antiquated. In, in Rochester, uh, the police were uh, required to inspect uh, bathing people's bathing suits. Uh, for- <laughs> oh, well, I fell into that one. Uh, let's see, old uh, Ann Arbor City Ordinance prohibits uh, bathing naked. In public, I got that one right. There you Bathing go. naked in uh, there you go. <laughs> the public uh, from sunrise to 8 p.m. So that means what? After 8 p.m., you can you can bathe naked? Yeah, apparently, apparently. <laughs> okay. I think I like Ann Arbor. I can bathe naked after 8 p.m. I kind of like that. Kind of. Why would you want to bathe with clothes on? I mean, you know, I just uh, anyway. I guess in a public place, I guess it would it would make some difference though. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Joseph. Hey, Oscar. And uh, like I say, that, that number, if they want it, they can call here at KBZ. I've got that down. And the, the PO, P.O. box was, once again, was... 568. 568. Right. And I've got the address for that. So if they need more information about outra- outrageous laws, they can uh, call here and we'll give it to them. Please do. We, we hope everybody will, will enter because we're confident that everybody knows one of these uh, situations. Okay. It could be uh, worth 100 bucks to them. That's right. Okay. I'm sure there's plenty of strange laws out there. <laughs> I'm sure there are. Okay, well, thank you very much, sir. Okay, thanks, Austin. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye.